something borrowed, something blue. Give us all your juicy news, sensational, irrational. It's Wedding Confessionals. Welcome to another episode of Wedding Confessionals. I'm Brooke. And I'm Pam. And the only thing we love more than weddings is talking about weddings. We're going to talk about someone's wedding today. We, we usually do, Brooke. <laughs> you know, like, yes. <laughs> I thought it was a great opener. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I threw a dinner party last night. And I am I am telling myself that I'm doing great this morning. But we're recording this on the day that we're doing daylight saving time. So yes. we're already kind of a little messed up in our brains. And then I was up a little later because of the dinner party. Our lovely guest arrived on time. I opened the door eating a protein bar. <laughs> Nice. So I'm not prepared. I am like, hey, come on in. <laughs> so we're doing great, guys. We're good. We'll doing, get there. Yeah, yeah. You'll see today. A plus material from me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is a returning guest. It is. Uh, we're very excited to have her back. Um, she originally came on as a single gal mm-hmm. who had just started dating this guy for a bit. And it was kind of like, right? Yeah. You're thinking about it, oh right? Oh my gosh, that was. And then you came back again yeah. when you were engaged after uh-huh. you got proposed because the second we saw that you got proposed, I was like, get your ass yeah. back on this podcast. Yes. <laughs> I hope that was the actual comment on Instagram. Get your ass on this podcast. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> get thing. your ass back here. Um, and now you are back to tell us all about your wedding. Yeah. Two and a half years ago. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> formerly Beth Morell, uh-huh. now Beth Reed Miller. Yeah. Yay. Welcome, girl. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to be back. Reunited, and it feels <laughs> so know. good. It feels like a different lifetime. Yes. So you we get here. to be one of our interesting guests that gets to tell us your pre-pandemic yeah, wedding. As if remember when we didn't care about anything else. Yeah, we were looking at photos. You brought. You mm-hmm. were so nice to bring your <laughs> photo book with uh, with you, and we were looking through it, and it was just kind of mind-boggling how. Everybody was sitting so close to get. No one was even thinking about no. it. No, Mm-mm. it was April of 2019. So like a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, just so new listeners know, mm-hmm. the way the wedding confessionals works is that listeners submit anonymously confessionals. And then um, we pick a few each episode, we read them, and then we either giggle about the crazy thing that happened to you, or we give advice if you have a question. And we have a guest on and we like to get to know the guest and kind of figure out their mindset of weddings and their personal history with weddings. But obviously, we've done that a lot with you. Lot. So we don't need to deal with your personal history with wedding. We need to no. talk about the update of your actual the wedding. actual day of the wedding. Yes. Yes. I went back and when we booked this, I re-listened to the last episode I was on because it was three years ago or so. It yeah. was... A- Okay, so September 25th, apparently, of 2018. Yeah, Pam looked it up. Wow. Wow. 2018 feels like 10 years ago, not three. A lifetime ago. Yeah, yeah. That's wild. So yeah, I a lot, it was interesting. It was like reading a history book of your own life. <laughs> About like, like this reliving life. Like, oh yeah, all of, like the decisions, because we had, we'd planned it pretty quickly. And then, you know, you have the months in between where everything is set you just have to wait for the event and i think that's about the time where we were recording and uh just like remembering back and just like wedding brain is you know like you're about mommy brain uh, you have kids it's real yeah Yeah, i feel like you get the same thing with wedding brain of like you your brain just kind of like all rationality stops working and you make weird decisions and you worry about things that don't matter and for me, it was a lot of like very concerned about other people. And I think if I was planning a wedding now, pandemic side, uh, I would do some things pretty differently of like just not just being like, you know what? If you want to come, come. I don't care. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of like, I don't care where, whatever you want or like, you know, like, uh, I don't want to deal with this. But there were some things that like I I blew out of proportion, not like in a crazy way, in my more subdued way, but like internally thinking about a ton absolutely didn't matter i could have been just like ah you know what however that falls it's fine but i don't know it's uh, so listening to this podcast i'm so glad you guys are back um <laughs> is it is interesting to me the stuff that people write in about and like in in two and a half three years you're gonna be like oh was that something i worried about i really don't remember that at all <laughs> it's a hard. good point yeah because yeah. you were just in that moment dealing with all the stresses yeah. in real time it yeah. can become so overwhelming it's a lot yeah and i even had a venue that was all inclusive so i didn't have to like manage a bunch of vendors separately like i had to obviously answer their questions and like tell them what i wanted but i didn't have to actually like 
manage different vendors thankfully um my sister-in-law is or my soon-to-be sister-in-law they're getting married in january and like she much like me has been a part of a ton of weddings and so she's like i can plan my own wedding that's great but like now she's saying that it's a it's a part-time job like you have to do so much that you don't normally do in your everyday life of being an event planner and like you know it's it's a lot so i always yeah um so when we last left off with you Mm -hmm. you had chosen the venue what's the name of the venue it is the red horse barn down in huntington beach california that's cool and you said it was i'm I'm like you i re-listened to it (laughs) yesterday um and so it's a park that is owned by the city but you can rent it out for events it's an equestrian park uh, like horses are uh, kept there and like there's and they like do shows and stuff there's, there's did you get to ride a pony in I, a we dress? Didn't, no we didn't oh. ride them but because <laughs> it's a it's like a equestrian area they have a couple horses that you can rent for the day quote unquote to take pictures with um, and like the money goes to like their um, I don't know they have some like charity that does like work with whatever so it's like a hundred bucks I think for your event they'll bring a really sweet horse out you can take pictures and like your guests can pet it and did we you did. do that? Aww. oh 100% <laughs> When they said yes. that, Stephen's like, well, we're doing that. <laughs> I, there's no, I was a little bit like, at the time, I was like, oh, 100 bucks for that. I mean, it'd be cool. But uh, he's like, no, I mean, obviously, we're going to do it. I'm like, all right, he knows me. <laughs> but uh, it it's made beautiful. for good pictures. I, it, yeah, the pictures are great. Uh, but it's it's really interesting because you drive down kind of the longer road past like the paddocks and stuff. And then in the middle is this like tree surrounded area that they have. Um, it's like, <laughs> The guy described to me, it's basically like the fancy people's horses are kept in that barn because it's an actual red red barn. And it's like basically the very wealthy have their horses kept away from the riffraff down the street. Um, but <laughs> <Those> trashy horses. <laughs> the trashy horses. Um, but they have like a big um, like cement area with this huge eucalyptus tree in the middle that they string lights if you want. You have to pay extra to get like the patio lights out, which obviously you're going to need because you're having an event. It's going to be dark, whatever. Um, and then around the corner, they have a grassy area with a arch that you generally do the ceremony in and they have um like a bride's room and a groom's room really beautifully decorated and so most of it's outdoors but they did have some outdoors, indoor yeah. stuff they, for you guys. yeah the indoor is only for like prep it's not got it yeah, yeah. but you know california it's pretty safe to um plan a wedding but um i remember uh one of your more recent guests was saying that like they were getting married on like one of the rainiest weekends that Ellie had had in a long time. I don't yeah. Know who that was Lauren. But I believe that weekend that she was getting married, uh, I remember distinctly because we were driving down to Huntington Beach to look for rehearsal dinner locations and it was dumping rain. Like we oh. were walking around the mall down there looking at different, um, different restaurants in the mall and different areas. And like, uh, so wet, you can like feel the raindrops down your scalp. Like, have you ever gotten that wet? Yeah. Like, so so much rain. <laughs> Listen to that episode. I was like, "Oh, I remember what I was doing then." <laughs> it was so wet, but uh, it ended up being absolutely beautiful. We had to rent, um, we had to rent some heaters because it was in April, so it gets a little chilly at night. But it wasn't that bad, so it was, it was beautiful. And the venue is gorgeous. Everyone was like, "Holy cow, this venue is so pretty." And I remember finding it online when we were originally looking for venues and being like. And I can't remember, I think, because I think we were originally wanting, like, a live band, and they only do DJ. And I don't know why. And you had to choose between yeah. two DJs that Yeah, they, they only have a couple, remember. yeah. So I remember... Did you like the guy you oh, ended up with? Oh, he was amazing. He was so good. One of my friends is like, someday if I get married, I'm finding that guy's name, because I want him to DJ my wedding. It was the greatest party. Like, he, his music choices were great. He kept things going really well. He was, he was excellent. What's nice. his name? I don't know. <laughs> We'll link it. I could we'll figure it out. Look up we'll my put emails. Put it up in the show notes. Like, we'll I think we only we only emailed with him like two or three times because he sent us like the spreadsheet he wanted with like our requested songs and whatever. Um, he reached out to us. The other guy never reached out to us, so we're like, I guess we're going with you. He was great. I like. I think I found him online afterwards to give him a review because I was like, genuinely, you made the day amazing. <laughs> like it was such awesome. a fun party. Which is fantastic. Um, I know a lot of people are like, well, you don't need a DJ. Just put it, plug in your phone. But like, sometimes you really need a DJ. Like, it keeps things rolling it really helps. nicely. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like the person that is sort of emceeing the event. Yeah. And just kind of moving each yeah. phase of it going. Yeah. And if you have someone in your life who is 
very outgoing and like performative often they can make a good vj but like they have to be paying attention they have to be like it's a job like it's not just a like you grab the microphone every now and then it's like they're cutting the cake now like right you actually have to like you, know, you can't be a guest or it's more yeah. difficult yes. to be a guest but because you're right yeah it's and i've been to some weddings where it's like what are we supposed to be doing right now? Like, you're just kind of sitting around and like, is, are we missing something or is there something happening? And then something starts happening. You're like, Oh, okay. I guess we're doing this now. It's so like, you know, having a good organized clear. <laughs> and that plays music that kind of fits the vibe of what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Although I will say, cause we, he asked like what type of music we wanted during the dinner. Cause he just plays some like background music. And I said like, you know, some kind of like bluegrassy, like fun, uh, folksy stuff. Like, I don't like country, but like I really do like folk type music. And so uh, he played some bluegrassy stuff. And at one point, Steve and I are eating. I'm like, what song is this? And it's that um, it's that pop song that is basically about a school shooting, but it's got like a really good beat to it. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, those uh, fresh kicks. Uh, oh, all um, the yeah, yeah. So it was like, with it was the a pumped blue. up kicks. Yeah, so if one. you don't think about the lyrics, it's, it's great. And you'll yes. hear of it and you're it's like, oh my. terrifying. Yeah. But it was like a bluegrassy version of that. I was like, uh, maybe not this song, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but other than that, <laughs> it was great. D- yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, yeah, it ended up. I guess it was a great day. <laughs> well, you mentioned it's funny because you're saying how great the DJ was, mm-hmm. but we were talking earlier. We're looking at pictures that yeah. you had of all the party shots, yeah. which were great. And we saw a lot of your husband dancing. Yes. And I was like, oh, this man loves to dance. Oh, he's a big dancer. Yeah. You're not a dancer. Uh, not really. I mean, you know, if but I you want the to. music still to be for everyone. Yeah, else. I want everyone else to have a good time because I have definitely been to some weddings where there is music playing for a dance floor and no one's out there and it oh, no. is like a bummer like you know it's yeah. it really sucks to be like oh this is supposed to be a party and everyone's just kind of like talking over loud music that shouldn't be that's loud so yeah that's, that's the other awkward. benefit of having um a venue oh i guess we were talking about the venue it is owned by the city and then this company is contracted out to do events there you can rent the location outside of that but you have to literally bring in everything like trash bathrooms everything wow. so oh. and the guy's like I mean, you can, but, you know, I have a bunch of vendor relationships. You're not going to get a better deal than this. And you don't have to think about anything. I was like, you're so hired. Up. <laughs> and back then, I don't know what the prices are now. Back then, it was for a Southern California wedding. It was extremely affordable. Like some stuff I was looking at, their quote was like just the food in other places. So I was like, yes, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> and just kind of going back to seeing um, availability compared mm-hmm. to now, because we were talking with uh, Amanda Walker who's an event mm-hmm. and wedding planner talking about now, like trying to book an event now oh my gosh, and yeah. a wedding, especially if you're trying to do it on like a Saturday. Like yeah. you have to go almost two years in oh, advance. Yeah, it's How wild. much time did you have between like booking the event and your actual wedding? Um, it just I think a- it was like eight or nine months. Yeah. I think no, we were, we were that engaged. That does not exist no, right now. Yeah, yeah. which is Different absolutely world. wild. We were engaged for nine months. So it must've been, you know, probably eight or so, but we, we wanted April because my brother's a teacher. So it lined up with his spring break. So it was like easier for travel and stuff. Um, and it, yeah, it just ended up working out really well that they had the availability and stuff. So, you know, but now apparently that's not a thing that happens. anymore. Yeah. You got lucky girl. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We went to bed multiple times over 2020 saying, I'm so glad we got married last year. <laughs> Cause yeah, one of our yeah. friends, uh, their wedding was supposed to be on March 14th of 2020 pie day of 2020 and we were literally getting ready to go to the wedding like dressed up had our makeup had my makeup on uh when steven got a call that um someone that he had worked with had potentially been uh with someone who is getting tested so it was like you know back in march we knew nothing about what was going on right and you couldn't even get tested back i mean like no no there were no tests so uh so we were uh so it was basically like you might have been infected or whatever exposed exposed yeah yeah, but also may not the guy is getting tested but like we're not going to know for a little bit so as we're about to walk out the door to a wedding where one of our friends who is the sister-in-law of this couple uh is like super immunocompromised and she was in the wedding and we're like we don't want to be patient zero we like there's yeah yikes yeah. so like we're texting her because not the bride 
because we're smart humans. Ooh, yes. smart uh, girl. I mean, like, this is the situation. Should we not come? Like, we're going to let you choose because, like, you're the one who's compromised here. Like, we can stand in the back, wave, and then leave. Like, whatever you're comfortable with. And she was like, uh, yeah. I mean, they, they, because it was all happening so quickly, everything was shutting down, they ended up paring down their wedding significantly and just doing, like, a quick ceremony and then, like, an after party at a at the hotel or something and the venue basically said yes we'll just delay it till whenever we can do this again and so they had a small really like sweet intimate wedding and we didn't go and that was like the real like first of being like what is happening like this is bizarre and they got married this past february when was it somewhere earlier this year they had their full wedding again it was the it was the second wedding the venue was able to do when everything opened up again and um it was great. We had a great time, but they had it all outdoors. And like, it was, you know, it was a little smaller than, because a lot of people who had traveled for the first wedding weren't going to come back for this one again. But yeah. yeah, I, my heart absolutely goes out to everyone who was just trying to have a good party and, you know, celebrate when it just adds another layer. Even like my brother-in-law's wedding coming up in January, there's just that extra layer where like some older family members are like, we're, we're not coming. Like, yeah, that's even if everyone is vaccinated, we're not flying like it's not gonna happen so it's just like the extra layer of sad you know it's just it's a it's a bummer so yeah yeah are you guys planning right now we are thinking of you guys because that's yeah it's tough yeah it's a lot yeah um going back to your specific wedding so last when we again when we were kind of um catching up with you the first Mm -hmm. time you had the venue you picked out the dress yeah um did you have a bachelorette party uh kind of so because all my bridesmaids were from out of state or country um we they came out on wednesday i think um they all flew in wednesday and then we got a house like an airbnb house in huntington beach and all stayed there and then um after the rehearsal dinner which was on a thursday they took me away and we went to big bear and they got a cabin surprised me they didn't tell me where we're going they're like get in the car (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> kidnapped Which, you yeah no, for a very long drive <laughs> like where, where are we, we going <laughs> and then finally we saw like the you know the freeways i was like oh this is exciting because they they knew like i you know i'm from the seattle area she's like we're getting you some trees <laughs> we're gonna nice. so we, unfortunately it was only one night which was a really sad like i wanted it to be a little longer because it's really fun but you know we spent a night in the cabin and then walked around the lake a little bit and then headed back and um so that was really just fun to get to just have just them but we almost died on the way what What? yeah it was incredibly foggy that night like i have not been in that thick of fog in a very long time if ever oh and the windy roads Uh getting up there and five scary women stuffed into my ford focus my friend Lindsay was driving and god bless her for driving because she is probably the most patient out of all of us she has four boys um yeah <laughs> so she's very like steady and you know un- unflappable but it was so tense just because like you it was the kind of fog where you cannot see past your headlights and the headlights aren't going very far right. and like those are very windy roads up there and like every now and then like another car would either come up behind us which would kind of help, but also like make it reflect everywhere. Or we'd be able to follow someone for a while. And that was nice. Uh, Some people were being total assholes and like zooming around. We're just like, why are you doing this? This is so dangerous. And the funniest thing, (laughs) the funniest thing was at one point, I don't know if we got high enough. There's a break in the fog and we all screamed. Like (laughs) you could probably hear us from a mile away. We were so happy. We're like, finally we can see. And then like, not even a hundred yards later, fog again. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. But it was it was so tense and like the windy roads and just being that just like everyone was just like white clawing it the whole not white just clawing, like white knuckling. <laughs> white <laughs> not white clawing it. That's a very <laughs> different thing. <laughs> white knuckling it. Uh Hmm. And by the time we got to the cabin, like I was really, I was pretty car sick. So I you like, needed that white. Claw. I walked into the, <laughs> I walked right? into the uh, the cabin and threw up. I hadn't started <laughs> drinking yet. I was just like full on, like I'm gonna go puke. And then, <laughs> so really great oh start to like a fun night. So like oh rehydrated a little bit, and I had like one drink. I was like, all right, I, I'm gonna go to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> but we had such a good time but trees but trees yeah and the next morning was so beautiful and we got up and made breakfast and you know had just a really nice day with with girls 
which is so nice. But how many people were yeah. in your uh, wedding party? Just four. Okay. Yeah. It and really it was nice. Cheryl, who Cheryl's is your buddy that's been on the show. Mm-hmm. Who else was in there? Uh, my friend Lindsay, and then two of my Canadian friends, Trisha and, and Pam. Okay, fun. Pam. Different Pam. Pam. And you Different mentioned Pam. it wasn't Pam. <laughs> not this Pam. It was Pam, just not this Pam. I know. I'm, okay, yes. <laughs> Different okay. Pam. <laughs> I was like, if you put Pam in your wedding and not me, it's so mean. <laughs> Oh, can you imagine? Like, and Ruth was in it. There just, wasn't. There wasn't. <laughs> Brooke. Sorry, Brooke. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> so, um, you mentioned earlier when we were chatting before the mm-hmm. podcast that you kind of had an interesting dress situation with the gals. That's kind of unconventional. Oh, yeah. I. I mean, I told because this was definitely something. Having been a part of a lot of weddings and having a lot of bridesmaids' dresses that are fine, they look fine. You spend a hundred bucks on them and then you literally put them in the back of your closet to give away in three years when you move and you're like, why do I still have this? Um, so I was like, honestly, you guys, I, I want you to wear what you're comfortable in. And also having been a part of some weddings that wanted to be all free floaty and being like, you know, pick whatever you want. It never works. You have to give them some kind of guidelines. <laughs> you have to be like this, you know, this length, this color or or this place in this. Color. Like there has to be some kind of because also getting a group of women to decide on something is usually not great. So your role as the bride is to set the parameters and see what happens between them. So I, I said I want like emerald green lace and I... I don't, I genuinely don't remember the whole process of us figuring this out, but I think just going on, hopping on Amazon and seeing what they had at that time, they had a bunch of different styles of emerald green lace dresses and they all picked a style they liked that came in the mail to fit them. They were like $30. (laughs) Wild. I mean, fast fashion, maybe not the greatest, but, uh, in this world that we live in right now, uh, you know, I don't know if I would actually absolutely say out of morality to shop on Amazon for that. But you know, if you're in a pinch, it's not bad. $30. Hard to, hard to beat that price. Yeah. And they looked great. They all looked wonderful. Yeah. They They looked really cute. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of the Canadians, it was a little more complicated since shipping up to Canada is a little different. Um, and so uh, I think they bought, well, Pam was visiting me one time, so she ordered it to my place to arrive while she was there. And it literally came like 10 minutes before we had to walk out the door to put her back on the plane. Oh, jeez. Oh. Like, no, 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 that's right. No, we were literally walking out to the car and like the guy, the delivery guy threw it over the fence. And we're like, there it is. Because it, <laughs> it got to the point where like, we can't wait any longer. I guess yeah. it's not coming. I'll just ship it up to you. Like, whatever. And so she grabbed it, ran back up to my apartment, threw it. And I was like, it fits good enough and shoved it in her bag. And we went. But uh, the other one, she, Trisha bought, I think, a couple dresses just to make sure and then got one one altered so it fit so she had to rebuy it or whatever but they look very cohesive yeah, they're, yeah they looked mm-hmm. great i was very happy that because sometimes with green you can get like a really yellow green and really blue green and they just yeah. kind of look weird they're all like basically the same shade so that was exciting when yeah so the last time you were on you said you were hoping to have about 200 people at the wedding yeah we how had did it end up being 160 was the total it was the final total oh wow yeah so smaller uh, yeah, it was smaller than I expected, but I also, I might have said this last time, it was basically a, it was a um, destination wedding for almost everyone, because also, like, we don't live in Huntington Beach. It takes, you know, 45 minutes to an hour to drive there for us, too. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Um, basically, everyone was coming in, except for my aunt, who lives a mile from the venue. That was... She's the only <laughs> basically one. Basically. The it. only local. Yeah, which was also great to have that. It's like, her house is basically base. the home base. Yeah. Oh, nice. And then, like, just run up the street and it's there. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it was it was a little smaller than we were expecting. But, I mean, if I was throwing it now, it would be probably half that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, it's our favorite part. Mm-hmm. Tell us what the best part of the mm. whole wedding process, wedding day, <laughs> um, and the worst. The worst probably would be uh, what it revealed about myself. <laughs> what a horrible thing to say. I think it really showed how much of a people pleaser I am. And like, I think now a couple of years out, I would maybe treat things a little differently. I've just been like, it doesn't matter what this person feels because it is my wedding. Like, yes, you can do things to accommodate people and to like make sure people are happy. You don't have to be a total raging bitch about things. But like, it's okay to say, I don't want that. Like, Stephen will always laugh at me because the, the, like, go-to decor of this venue is a lot of... I mean, it's a barn, so it's going to be rustic, mm-hmm. um, which rustic was a huge thing eight, ten years ago. Uh, not so much now, um, especially now, um, but their, like, go-to decor thing is lanterns everywhere, and I 
don't want my wedding to look like a Hobby Lobby. Um, and I was very adamant to Steven. I was like, I don't want the lanterns. Because like their set thing was like flowers on every other table and then a lantern on every other table. I was like, I don't want the lanterns. I'll pay extra to have more flowers. I don't want the lanterns. Mm-hmm. And that the meeting <laughs> where they like show you everything you pick uh when they're like and we have these lanterns that they're very proud about too which also doesn't help when someone's like oh i love this i'm not gonna be like oh i hate it like i'm like oh yeah it is nice so they pull out <laughs> they pull out the lanterns, eight octaves basically yes, <laughs> uh, so they pull out the lanterns to show us what they look like and steven was like oh she's gonna say no thank you i don't want those and i was like oh you know i uh, maybe not so much. I, I had kind of had a different idea for what. Oh, I don't know. And Stephen's like, just say you don't want the lanterns. It's okay to say you don't want the lanterns. Aww. <laughs> there were a couple sprinkled around on the day of that I saw. Because, you know, you don't see everything at your own wedding. And they just kind of fill holes with whatever. Like, the decor team on that team was great. Like, absolutely incredible. They also have a lot of, like, scripty signs that, like people over sign their wedding you don't need a rhyming sign for every single table and every single thing that happens <laughs> uh but uh so i was walking from like one place to another during the wedding and i saw like a pile of lanterns in the, in the corner i was like fine okay whatever <laughs> like <laughs> what am i gonna do to remove those lanterns <laughs> like it doesn't matter no lanterns <laughs> but yeah i think just seeing myself in a stressful situation react to stuff was like oh that's something you can work on that's a that's a that's a growth area (laughs) do you think now when things have come up in your life now do you feel like you're more assertive about what you like no (laughs) (laughs) no it's definitely but now you know you have a problem and that's step one now i recognize in myself and be like well yeah it's it's okay to say to stand up for yourself (laughs) it's hard it is yeah to someone's face yeah something that they're proud of yeah Yeah, exactly and but it's also like it's your wedding like it's okay if it's the design is not exactly you know, it's, I don't know, there's, just be firm, brides, you can do it, <laughs> brides and grooms. Stand up for what you Stand want. Stand up for what you want, yeah. And I, we had a friend who described our wedding as um, a Art Nouveau uh, Rivendell, and I was like, thank you, that is the highest of compliments. <laughs> Nice. Yes, it was gorgeous. It was beautiful, and I was very happy with how it turned out, and there weren't lanterns on the table. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, what's mm-hmm. the best? Ah, oh, geez. I mean... You know, being married to the love of your life is amazing. It's great. I love it. <laughs> but I really do think the best part was having like all four of my best friends in the same place for a weekend because that never, especially two of them are in Canada, two of them are in Washington. Like ki- there's kids now, there's everyone has kids. Like that's probably not going to happen again. You know, and if uh, yeah it probably won't ever happen again so it, that was really really great and like they all know each other two the two canadians obviously know each other but like everyone else kind of every canadian knows each other yeah that's, there's only two of them works. there's only yeah. 10 people in <laughs> all canada so, no i mean we we met all yes. in college yes. so that's <laughs> the three of us are friends but like they they all know each other from various points in my life you know i'm the center of that of that five person group but um, I don't think they had all spent a ton of time with each other and they all got along really well. So it was really, it was just like such a beautiful, wonderful time just to like be with your best friends from, I mean, I've known all of them for at least 15 years. So like, it's, yeah, it's really nice. That was really wonderful. I love that. That's a good answer. Yeah. yeah. Friendship yeah. love. I know. So it's real. And yeah. it really is like you said, like as you grow, get older and people get busy. Yeah. It's just kind of hard to connect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, we all live in extremely different places. No one's going to fly out, leave their multiple children anymore. So just to hang. Yeah. Just to, I mean, that would be amazing if they did. That would be incredible. We just lie and say you're getting married again. Like, guys, we're renewing the vows. (laughs) We're doing it. And then you get there, like, I mean, if we, if we worked really hard, I bet they would we would probably do a reprise of it. It would just take a lot of work, <laughs> but, uh, and it probably wouldn't be for a couple of years, but, um, yeah, it was really wonderful. And I don't know, just, you know, having, having everyone just like work together for like you, you know, it just doesn't happen that often of being, I'm not a center of attention person. So like, you know, I didn't, I didn't want anyone to go absolutely out of their way, but I was also like, but you know, it is my wedding is going to happen once. So, you know, if you're going to fly here, we're going to have a good time. I appreciate everything you do, you know, like, and I have bent over backwards for other people and a lot of them in that wedding party for various things and weddings and stuff. So like, you know, show up, 
do great. And I, I, my heart breaks for people in weddings who have a bad bridal party experience because I've, you know, I've been a part of some of those, uh, not the problem child, I hope. Um, but it just, it just sucks to have that element for your wedding. Like you just want to know everyone is backing you and like working for it. Um, for you. Yeah. yeah. Like it's, yeah, it makes me sad when I hear stories about like either having to uninvite a bridesmaid that is st- well, considering what I just talked about, my absolute worst nightmare of being like, hey, you need to People leave. People please turn right. Yeah. No confrontation, thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh, that would absolutely be the worst. And also someone who, like, you thought was going to be your forever friend and, like, turned out to be a, a terrible situation. Like, that's sad. That's that's yeah. a real bummer. So when, I mean, listening to your podcast, I often talk back to it. And people have been like, I don't know. <laughs> should I, like, should I have this person in my bridal party? I don't know. Like, if you're wondering if you should maybe you shouldn't like if it's a like a uh, i don't know like it should be much like getting married a for sure this is the person i want because you're gonna have them in your photos you're gonna you're gonna like have those memories and there's so much going on in a wedding you don't want drama on top of it that's the worst solid advice good advice no. yes i mean if that isn't a transition into getting the yeah. confessionals <laughs> shit more advice coming. beth is already rolling out with the advice she's ready she's ready yeah. <laughs> she's like be assertive <laughs> be assertive because i'm not <laughs> we're gonna get you there yeah. we'll see <laughs> <laughs> so you guys ready to get to confessionals yeah let's okay do it. cool okay confessional number one. Ooh, it is long. yeah pam gets the thank no, god long, pam. but it was good okay, okay well read yeah. us a story pam <laughs> Tell us your tales. (laughs) All right, here we go. Dear Wedding Confessionals, as a bridal alteration specialist, I get to see all kinds of body types. Everyone is beautiful in its own way. I do, however, constantly see brides who purchase dresses because they have a picture in their mind as they want what they want to look like. However, their body type is just not suited for the dress style or architecture. I had a bride who wore a DD cup, and she sent me a picture of a backless crepe, 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 crepe. I crepe. genuinely don't know. I've never said the word out loud, but crepe. I like your interpretation. Go with it. <laughs> I think it's crepe. Crepe dress, very structured, and asked me through email if I recommended she wear it. I told her the honest truth, that it might be difficult to support the sisters in that type of dress. Her response stated that she always dreamed of wearing a backless dress, so she is heartbroken after hearing my advice. I agreed to have a consultation with her. Again, I stated that I could alter the dress. However, I could not guarantee perfection given the structure of the dress and the size of the girls. I love the term girls. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Mm -hmm. To make a long story short, I altered the dress and did what I could. We had five fittings, excessive to say the least. Her final fitting lasted two hours. At that fitting, I had her tell me what her vision was, and I would pin the bust area, have her take the dress off, and make adjustments, and have her put it back on. By the end of two hours, she was crying happy tears and left. She signed the receipt, which had the statement indicating her satisfaction, and I didn't charge for her for my time or work with that final two-hour fitting. I just wanted her to leave feeling confident. (laughs) <laughs> well like, well that's a what, big well <laughs> what is happening well oh, no. two days later which was a week prior to her wedding at 10 p.m i received an email saying that she tried the dress on for her grandma and her grandma removed the work i did and re-altered the bus line whoa oh no she said it was now worse than ever. Of course it was. This was a challenging alteration, and she was desperate for me to fix it. I was so insulted and upset. After a sleepless night, I told her I had exhausted all I could do for her, and she would need to find someone else to help her. She did send me a reply, stating she was going to take the dress to her mother's friend, but she really did want to give me the choice as to whether or not I wanted to fix it. Here's the kicker. When she posted her photos on Instagram, she sang the praises of the seamstress who rescued her dress. No! And tagged her. No! Bitch move for sure. Wow. The moral of the story is, when shopping for a wedding dress, find one that suits your body type. The photos on Instagram that the designers post are altered. 
and the dresses are cinched and not everyone is going to look like that in them. Seamstresses don't have magic wands. We have skill, experience, and expertise. Thank you. I really enjoy listening to your podcast during my long days in the sewing studio. Give Ruth a biscuit for me. (laughs) Oh, this one person is a saint. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. I really liked this one because I'm like, this is a vendor giving us a different side of of the wedding business. Why did she let her grandma? Beth, you know the answer. She's a people pleaser. <laughs> if you were in this situation and your grandmother said, oh, I can fix that for you. Would mm. you be like, uh oh, it's grandma. What are you gonna be like? No, no grandma, because, okay, don't touch so my here, dress. Here's the truth about the last like month before the wedding. We slipped into fuck it mode and was like, oh, I don't care what happens from here on. Out. I just want it to be over because everyone would be like, oh, are you so excited for your wedding? I'm like, I mean, yeah, but also like I'm so ready to not be thinking all about everything all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so like. A couple nights before your wedding. What are you doing? Like, there's so many. What are you doings here? <laughs> Just. Uh, yeah. I mean, I get like, oh yeah, I want to try my dress show my grandma, but like, she's like, oh, I can fix that for you. Don't, 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 don't. No. It's a couple days before your wedding. What if something goes wrong? Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, I think it's really interesting too. The more we hear from wedding professionals on the mm-hmm. show, it's just kind of almost teaching brides and grooms oh, yeah. about how to act or how to communicate mm-hmm. or what to expect from a vendor. Yes. So that you guys yeah. can have the best relationship possible yeah. to get exactly what you need. I think a lot of it too comes down to don't forget, you're not their only wedding. Yeah. Like that is especially now when everything is slamming together, all timelines are happening at the same time. Like right. you're not their only wedding and like yeah. you're probably not going to be on their priority list until it is 2 days before your wedding. <laughs> so Wow. Oh. Yeah, you know what? I'm really proud of her for yeah. sticking to her guns and Absolutely. saying I did what I could for you especially because for not charging that, for that last 2 hour session. Yes. <laughs> that that bride and then to do that bitch move? That's like, gross. That's what? really icky. I don't I don't like that at all. That's Mm-mm. The that's lesson not is right. don't let your grandmother touch your dress. Don't. Don't <laughs> no, don't touch your dress a week before your wedding. Yeah. No. Like that's ooh. Yeah, let the pros do their thing. Yeah. Well, there's a reason you went to a pro. Yeah, exactly. I I mean, I think that that bride deserved what she got. Yeah. Also to like (laughs) ask the pro, is this a bad idea given my body and her her being like, honestly, probably not the greatest. There's probably something else out there. And then to go and do it anyway. I don't know. Yeah. You kind of wrote your own story on that one. Yeah, you sure did. I, when I was getting my dress altered, which there's very few alterations that needed to be done, thankfully, it's mostly the length because I'm short. Um, (laughs) I asked the lady because it was just like, some seamstress out of her house in LA here that I found uh, asked her like all right what's like the trend you really don't like because I'm just it's curious you know and she's like all these like the the like shears with the lace over top of them that are super big right now she's like they're so frustrating you can barely change them because like any holes you'll see yeah and people want them to do a whole lot more work than they can do because like that sheer fabric can't hold up that much weight <laughs> and like yeah I was like yeah I oof, I get that like and I, I get it I have big boobs too there is only so much you can wear out there comfortably like you know beautiful dresses backless oh <laughs> that's not happening like that's not <laughs> for me <laughs> you know like that's just so like and yeah there there are visions of what you want to be and sometimes you have to try something else and that's okay yeah Solid points. Yeah. Like she, said, she said they're not magicians. They're, you know, no. you're limited to the fabric you have yeah. and the structure that exists. Yeah. Good to, and the good to know. body they're putting it on. Yeah. And I I mean, some some designers now are using more uh, varied bodies to advertise their work, which I super appreciate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But flipping through a lot of Pinterest and those magazine stuff, it's all six foot tall women who weigh 100 pounds. Like... Unless you are that, you're not going to look like that. <laughs> yeah. And even like she said, even those are usually pinned yeah. in the back. And you just can't see that and they yes. photoshopped and, them. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's like when you see, like when they go to say yes to the dress and they're trying them on, but there's these huge clamps yeah. in the back. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you're like, I guess this is what it's going to look like. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Ready to go on to number two? Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Okie dokie. 
my turn to read and try not to fuck up. <laughs> Confessional number two. Hi, Ruth, Brooke, Pam, and guest. Hello. It's Beth. Hi. Uh, so glad the podcast is back. I've been listening to old episodes ever since I got engaged last year and was super bummed when I finished them. <laughs> now that you're putting out new episodes, I save them for Thursday nights when I listen while treating myself to a long walk with a glass of wine and a travel mug. Oh, Girl, yes. let's Love that. discuss. Freaking brilliant. I, ha- I have only done it once. Pandemic time. Put in a travel mug. Put a gin and tonic. Walk the dog. Greatest walk. Of my life. Just once? <laughs> I, I know. I have more. specific outdoor wine glasses <laughs> oh, for the, my like, dog walks. The, like, the Yeti ones that are I like, am g- kind of like, I'll mm-hmm. link what I bought, yeah. guys. I'll link it in the show notes. Uh, Tristan and I are kind of known in the neighborhood <laughs> for like the people that are walking around with the alcohol while walking their dog. <laughs> That's incredible. I mean, we're not, I mean, whatever. We have a good time. It's fun. <laughs> Multitask. It's just multitasking. So, yeah. So know that I share the wine glass travel mug. Yes. I, I wholeheartedly support this choice. You're one of our people. <laughs> yes. Um, so here's my issue. My fiance comes from a very religious background. Both sides of his family are strict Mennonites. Think borderline Amish. And therefore, nearly none of his family are planning to attend our wedding. He left the church at an early age. And as a result, none of his family attended any of his graduations or any other big events in his life. As a result of these experiences, he has had a decent amount of anxiety about our wedding. I have a huge, very close extended family, all of whom will be there, and we have a number of friends who will be attending as well, but he's feeling a lot of shame around the fact that almost none of his own family is planning to show up, just his mom. I feel torn and sad because I want to feel excited about the day we finally get to tie the knot after over seven years together. And I hate that he's not enjoying the planning process and really only sees it as a favor that he's doing for me and my family. One issue in particular is that I know that a father-daughter dance will mean a lot to my dad, but my mother-in-law's religion doesn't allow her to dance, so my fiancé won't be able to have a mother-son dance. Things like that make me feel awful for even wanting a wedding in the first place. My fiancé has had a hard life, and I worry that this is really shining a spotlight on that. How can I validate and respect his feelings and also try to enjoy what should be a fun and exciting period in our lives? Help. Sincerely, marrying a Mennonite. Oh, <sighs> I know. Woof. I. It's interesting. The the v- two overarching themes in this whole thing mm-hmm. is one the sad situation that her fiance is in, mm-hmm. but also how much she loves him. Yeah. Yes. This she, just oozes really with feel how it. much you care about mm-hmm. your future spouse, and I think that's really beautiful. Yes. That you, yeah. you're you not just being like, it's fine. You're really thinking about it. So help. <laughs> I mean, I'm so, wondering if there's something else that they can do with his mom. Um, like I always, we couldn't have candles at our venue is outdoors and also California. Um, but like, I always like the, the um, like unity candles, the mothers light together. And then during the ceremony, you two take the individuals and light the one candle. I've always liked that. Um, so I don't know if there's something like in the ceremony or something that you can do special for his mom to make another special moment there that doesn't involve dancing or something that goes against her beliefs. I agree with that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. What? And if it's not that, find something yeah. along those lines yeah. that's special I mean, for her. It's, it really sucks that like he's not enjoying the process because like that's you know wedding plans so stressful you need someone there but i will say it sometimes is the the way it works out that mm-hmm. one person's just more into wedding planning mm-hmm. than the other whether it be due to family baggage or just pure interest yeah. and the one thing is that one this is one thing mm-hmm. and then the rest of your lives together you can mm-hmm. start you know having things that sort of swim together yeah that this does kind of feel like this is more your show than his show yeah i think i'm with you that trying to find ways and i would honestly if he's up to it i would try to figure out what to do with the mom get her involved to figure mm-hmm. out what thing that would be fun maybe there's some tradition yeah. from their religion that you could you know pay some sort of yeah. homage to in that maybe maybe not in the actual ceremony if she feels like that's not really respectful but maybe right. at the reception yeah maybe if it's a poem that mm-hmm. could be read like I don't know if there's any sort of thing that we can sort of honor yeah. that side of his family if there's certain music mm-hmm. if there's any sort of 
way that you can sort of incorporate it. It it, it is a bummer. If that's what he wants, though, he yeah. left it right. That's true. That's true. I mean, I want. And she didn't mention here, but I wonder how much they have talked about, like what he wants. Because I mean, it does sound like there's a huge family on her side that probably has a lot of expectations, but also like, well, what do you want for the day? Like, how can what is something in this day that we can do that you you can get excited about? Whether it's food, like, or is there like some food he can't he would love to have there, or uh, you know, something, some part of the ceremony, something, even if it's like paring down the guest list mm-hmm. so that it's a smaller wedding so that he feels more comfortable which you know not not great on for some people but like that might be what he wants is just less expectation i don't know that's a good point i also, w- sorry god oh, i was just gonna say you know also for him maybe point out that you know f- there he's she said lots of friends and family Focus on the friends. Friends mm-hmm. are your chosen family. Mm-hmm. And if you have walked away or, you know, I mean, a lot of that has happened even recently, not necessarily with religion, but political beliefs and mm-hmm. whatnot. And you have you focus on who's there, who's going to be representing you yeah. and have them be sitting on your side yeah. or his side. Yeah. Or don't have sides. Oh, yeah. Don't have sides. And I feel like most of every, yeah. yeah. now don't do that but maybe like even encourage like if you could do like kind of a whisper campaign to certain family members be like would you mind just making sure like it doesn't look uneven or you know Mm -hmm. or i guess if you especially if you just make it so that you only have enough chairs yeah or row or mark off the rows Mm -hmm. so that you just kind of fill yes you know what i mean but yeah yeah, maybe that would kind of visually make him feel a little more secure i like the fact that they're really open with each other about it i feel like she's picking up on this because he's being really honest Mm -hmm. about it and i think that's really nice Mm -hmm. and as much as this you know and honestly the other thing is he's not alone for a lot of people part of a wedding day can be kind of sad yeah either a family member has passed and isn't going to be there for it Mm -hmm. or there is a broken family situation and it really is like when you have a family situation where you know you've gone through life and you've kind of made it work but like when you're getting married family's such a big theme that all of a sudden you're confronted with this stuff Mm -hmm. like he's not alone that happens to a lot of people and maybe just knowing that that you're not alone in that happening Mm -hmm. i know it must feel more severe when it is kind of him walking away from the church and a lot of his old community i also think as much as it feels very minor i think it's really cool that his mom is coming yeah yes and i think like again when we talk about focusing on the positive which again makes me say like try to talk to her and figure out if there mm-hmm. is some way to incorporate really celebrate the fact that she is there that's really wonderful because yeah. that's you know probably kind of a brave thing for her and I think it's very cool um, another thing I would say and I don't really know your own family's dynamic but he is going to become part of that mm-hmm. family as well he's marrying into your family mm-hmm. so this is kind of a time to really celebrate that so maybe if it doesn't have to be a ceremony type thing but maybe make sure that your family understands to really make sure to welcome him and feel like he's not just some secondary person in the family yeah. like you're in it now buddy yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, like get on sure. in this gang <laughs> yeah. we apparently like to show up and party and you're now with <laughs> us <laughs> and like i do wonder um because there's so many traditions in weddings and i feel like as millennial and gen z start getting married too uh that tradition is just not a thing for us as much like you know only do them if they matter like especially in your wedding only do them if they matter start new traditions start do something together that is not really wedding-y but it is for you to like really show that this is a new family or something like you know i don't know try to find something that is unique to you too and it's really indicating like this new family we're we are making our own way now. Also, um, if you plan on doing any sort of honeymoon, even if it's just a quick mm-hmm. thing afterwards, I know some people delay, really focus on making sure that's something that he's really, really into. Yes. Yes. Like maybe that can be his thing to really look forward yeah. to. And that's maybe more maybe more tailored to him and his you know, his interests. Yeah, for sure. So kind of as an olive branch to be like, I know you're doing this wedding thing for me. Mm-hmm. I personally, uh, you know, I got married on my husband's, apple orchard it was mostly his side of the family because it was local for them i honestly could have just eloped like i you know what i mean but we one of the reasons why we had the big wedding ceremonies because his family really wanted it yeah and it was just like i did a lot of work just for him and i had a great time and it was like but at the end of the day part of the effort i put into that wedding 
was out of love for my husband and me trying to show love to his family and respect them Mm -hmm. and be like, I want to make sure that you guys get this, like this vision that you've always wanted of your son and what they're going to have. So maybe if he can kind of see it from that point of view of sometimes we do do things for our loved ones just to like celebrate them and to connect with their family. And if he's doing it really early on in their relationship like that, that can, you know, that gives a lot of goodwill towards your new family. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean... I think they're going to be okay. And let oh, us know yeah. how it goes. Yeah. 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 If you think of a unique thing to do with the the mom, let us know what it was. Because yeah. I'm yeah. curious. Give us an update. Yeah. yeah. On to number three. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, Brooke, Pam, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you guys what? know that. That's her whole name. Yes. Uh, I want, I first want to say that I absolutely love your podcast. I have a couple of questions for you. First, a little backstory. My boyfriend and I are not yet engaged, though we have been talking about it for a while. We've discussed what kind of wedding we would want, and he's basically down for whatever I want to do, so long as we don't go broke doing it. (laughs) Good luck. (laughs) I have a huge family. As in just my family alone, we'd be inviting 130 plus people. Holy fuck. (sighs) I have many half-siblings who are married with kids and one whole brother who is married and has a baby. I have a a lot of aunts and they are all married with kids who are married and have kids. So it's a very big crew. My boyfriend, let's call him Steve, that's my husband's name, uh, comes from a very, (laughs) very small family, as in he would only have probably max four people that he would want to invite. He doesn't have many friends he could invite. He's very much an introvert. A part of me wonders if I should just plan on doing an extremely small and intimate wedding so as to keep the cost down. I also worry that if I have a big wedding with all my family, Steve will feel bad about not having many family members there to celebrate our marriage. What are your thoughts? Thank you for the wonderful podcast I listen to on my hour commute and you keep me laughing and entertained. Thank you again. From Dream Planner. Similar. I was like, there's a theme. <laughs> so this is, this is, uh, sounds a little familiar where, um, kind of, where Stephen and my sides were also off, off balance, where um, he doesn't have a very big family, but they have a very large group of chosen family, basically his parents, like the crew that he grew up with, they're all still very close. So there were uh, like almost everyone we invited from Texas came and it was a large chunk. And so with just family, no friends invited, it was going to be like 110 people or something. And uh, so I get that. Like, you still want your friends to be there. I, I'm i not super close with my extended family. We invited them anyway, and they came because they're all relatively local. But, like, that's probably, you know, I if I did it again and had a smaller crew, that kind of family would not be invited. Because, like, yeah, it's, it's nice to be invited to your family's wedding, but at the end, like you don't know anyone else but your family there you can have a big family party later like you don't need to have a wedding with 130 people just because they're related to you that's That's, fair especially if you don't know them very well i don't i like i don't know maybe they are a super close very large family but that's also very expensive that's very expensive it is well and I, i think i don't know um you know now during a time of COVID and people are really mm-hmm. rethinking and shrinking those yeah. guest lists down of like just who is important and who you actually know. Yeah. I feel like my new rule for a wedding, if I would, if I ever had to do one would be like, if they came to the wedding and I didn't see them, I would be sad. I missed them. Then they can be invited. <laughs> <laughs> like one of my cousins who, I don't know super well. She had to leave early. I literally didn't see her. I don't think she was actually in any of the photos. <laughs> didn't change my day. <laughs> you know, like there's, I feel like the people at your wedding should be the people you really want your wedding. Like you yes. really, really, the people who know you and know your future husband or wife, uh, you know, like know and are literally there to like stand up and say, we support your marriage. I mean, yeah, if you have a giant, enormous family who wants to support your marriage, that's very exciting. But the realities of the world is that that's very large and very expensive. That's true. I, I say do a family reunion party later. That's, that's what I was going to say. Pam sort of did a version. That's what we did. Yeah. tell Remind everybody what you guys did. Yeah. So we, um, my husband, Jeff, he was, he's from the East Coast and I was from Southern California, but we met in Los Angeles and that's where we decided to have our wedding. Um, so pretty much everybody had to travel mm-hmm. for that. And he has a huge family and mine's on the smaller side. I'm mm-hmm. more like the you know, the groom in this one. And he, 
Um, his mom, who is wonderful, she's actually been on our podcast as well. <laughs> she said that she just gave us the blessing. She's like, you don't have to invite everybody. Nice. Do what you want to do. Yeah. And we'll throw a party for you on mm-hmm. the East Coast. So we actually did the honeymoon right after the wedding. And then at the end of the honeymoon, we went back to his parents' oh, house great. and had almost an entire another wedding yeah. and reception. And it was a blast. And yeah. everybody got to be there and be a part of it. And I wore my dress again. Oh, and fun. Jeff was in his tux. And it just... It's also benefit that they threw it for you. You didn't have to plan that. It's like, true. that's huge if someone in your family really wants everyone to come there you say then you throw us a party (laughs) (laughs) no i mean and they you know they were so sweet and they did ask questions Mm -hmm. like you know about the food or the dj or anything we were like we don't you know we just want to have fun (laughs) and hang out and have fun Mm -hmm. and and they you know my wedding colors was red and so they did everything in red Mm -hmm. and black and white and so it was they kept with the theme and it was great i highly suggest it if you have those means and family to do that yeah that that sounds really fun (laughs) yeah oh and i was also going to say that when um whenever you have an event and you make it a wedding sometimes the prices automatically Mm -hmm. go up and if you are just throwing a family reunion the price might be a little different also you might be able to throw it on a sunday and it's a little more casual Yes. maybe a more casual venue. Yeah. So yeah, you can kind of use that again, like if you're doing an intimate wedding and then you are, if you are still having to pay for both, mm-hmm. you could do sort of an outdoor at a park or something like that. That's a little more cost efficient for the larger family gathering. And yeah. I haven't been to too many like small weddings. I actually can't think, I think feel like most of the weddings I go to are like decent sized weddings. I haven't really been to a wedding since the pandemic though. So, you know, things change, but I feel like a small intimate wedding sounds really fun where it's just like people you know you get to like chat and hang out with people it's small it's like it's probably better food like you probably in a really pretty venue or like a really cool restaurant like it it sounds like a good time honestly and i think the like idea of a big old princess wedding that like a lot of us get in our brains the reality of it is that you're being like pulled from one direction like i i don't remember much my reception at all because like you know we had to go around to all the tables you're like people want Mm -hmm. pictures with you you're you are the person of the hour and you don't get to actually experience your wedding your wedding is not really for you it's for everyone else coming and so having a smaller one where you can actually sit down and talk with your friends sounds really nice (laughs) Uh, well, mine was smaller. Yeah. We only had 80. And I mean, I guess that's still on the bigger side. I yeah. don't know. But it's still, it does go by in it a go, flash. I mean, yeah, it goes by in a flash. Yeah. But it seems like if it, <laughs> mo people, mo problems. <laughs> yeah. So I think all of us are leaning towards do an intimate, small yeah. wedding ceremony and yeah. then potentially later something with your side of the family only yeah. since they Especially, seem to be it's large. It sounds like a ton of kids. And as we've heard on this podcast many times, kids are a problem at weddings sometimes. People don't know if they should have them or not. And like, if you just throw an afternoon brunch, potluck, whatever with family, let yeah. the kids run wild. And get to wear that dress again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Get get a dress you can wear twice. Makes the cost feel a lot better, too. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And when you get that dress, don't let your grandmother alter don't, it. Don't. Don't <laughs> do it. <laughs> yes. Oh, Grandma, hands oh, off. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Are you guys ready to move on to some bridal breaks? Yes. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Bridal breaks for any new listeners are just suggestions we give not only to brides, but anyone helping to plan a wedding of fun things to do that have nothing to do with weddings so that you calm down and enjoy your life and maybe don't get too stressed out. Mm -hmm. Breathe. Mm -hmm. Namaste and breathe. And uh, Pammy usually gives uh, some sort of fun seasonal beverage. We're in fall, y'all. I'm expecting something really fun fall. (laughs) You're going to disappoint me and give me something not fall. I no. can I interrupt real fast? Yeah. yeah. So I went re-listening to when I was on last night, and we had a big argument about um, mule cups being fall or not. Yes. I have been continually thinking about that. Yeah. They are 100 percent fall. They're a fall drink. Yeah. They even J- look like pumpkins. The <laughs> mule cup makes it a fall drink. Yeah. No. It's I, a cold drink. I like because I also listened We're to that re-listened that episode, and yeah. what I liked about it is in the beginning Beth was politely neutral, <laughs> and by the end of the episode, I dragged her to my side. <laughs> I, as you keep thinking about it, you're like, yeah, fall. Got it. No, I'm totally Warm wrong, by the way. Of ginger. I'm crazy. No, it's not it's a totally fall, fall drink. drink. Ginger, absolutely. Pam is politely disagreeing. 
<laughs> Staying strong. Okay, hit it, Pam. All right, so this one I found on, I love this website. It is Anne's, Anne'sEntitledLife.com. <laughs> so wow. good. Anne, Anne sounds fun. Anne. Okay. Yes. And these are apple pie jello shots. <laughs> I mean, interesting. So I'm little little note mm. about Pam. I love Jello shots. <laughs> yeah, I'm on board. I really do. You never grew out of it. No, I <laughs> love Jell-O. them. Jello's delicious. It is del- big and fan. You know what? And it, you can get like crazy flavors as we're going about to find yeah. out. What's in so, this one? This one is just made with water, apple cider, unflavored gelatin. Oh, make Fireball. Your own. Hell yeah. yeah. And Crown Royal apple. Oh yeah, that sounds so good. That just sounds good as a drink. Like, don't right? put the gel. Yeah, you don't even have to do the Jello. Yeah. What yeah. I also like about this one is sometimes I have found because I was looking for like some fall drinks or whatever for the party that I mm-hmm. threw yesterday, and I found like some of the cocktails that are out there call for all these recipes with the stuff that you can't find anywhere. Right. Yes, those are all things you could easily get at like a Bevmo. Mm-hmm. That sounds yummy. Mm-hmm. Yes, sign me up. All shots, right. shots, 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 shots. <laughs> Try it uh, out. Let although, me know. My mom always made jello when we were sick. I don't know quite why, because it's just sugar. Oh, it's soothing so for the throat. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. But like, I very much crave jello when I'm sick. Really? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Like, it's That's very much a. Food. Yeah, it's very. <laughs> it's sweet. <laughs> my husband's like, what? <laughs> why Why do you give jello? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Well, they serve it in like hospitals. It's like easy to digest, yeah. lots of water. They, yeah, and again, you need the sugar, though, because you true. usually aren't eating that yeah. much. But yeah, I just make a huge bowl of strawberry jello when I'm sick and just sit on the couch and slurp it up. <laughs> yep. Love it. Delicious. Beth, what is your bridal break? My bridal break is one of the best things that I watched this year, which actually was um, at the last wedding I did go to uh, earlier this year. The table was a bunch of people who didn't really know each other. So one guy asked, what was the best thing you guys watched this year? And I was like, what a great question to ask a bunch of people you don't know because everyone was watching so much TV. Fantastic. Right. One of the greatest things I stumbled upon was on HBO Max. It is called The Great Pottery Throwdown. I've seen it. It's the greatest show in the world. It's the same production company as The Baking Show, which I believe was one of my bridal breaks um, previously. <laughs> because I have found, uh, also finding something about myself, anything British, skill-based, and com- competition reality, I will watch all of them. I love You're them in. so much. They have to be British, though. Yes. Because... Uh, there's just something about it the accents really just like take the level down to like a much more calm state the jewelry one that i think is also on uh, hbo it's not good the one super suggested but the pottery great pottery throwdown i think there's four seasons now it is much like bake off chill and sweet and everyone is just like artists and just doing their thing and uh the best part is the male judge whose arms are the size of a fucking tree trunk he is this ginormous like bouncer he looks like a british bouncer and like from maybe a period piece he might be a boxer like he is this huge man with like terribly slicked back ha- like balding hair it's he he is his personal style he's is inc- interesting it it definitely evolves he eventually loses the the like jacket that's too small for him <laughs> thankfully because it's like riding Aww. up is he's the greatest person but he he i would be afraid to walk past him in an alley but he loves pottery so much he cries almost every episode it's the paul hollywood handshake if you i can't remember his name now but if he if you get tears out like he will choke up and stop talking and be like it's it's just brilliant man it's amazing it's so (laughs) it's so wonderful and like pottery is fascinating like the the glazing stuff is great and the i it's it's a fascinating show just learning about pottery and they do some like historical stuff about because they shoot it in this like historical kiln area that like used to be a big factory for ceramics and stuff and it's great i really really love it (laughs) it's really interesting to one just learn like the skill behind it but two just the chance of how it ends up baking oh yeah it might be broke you never know it can explode they can work so hard and then they open the little thing to look what happens the next day and it's shattered it's so tense but like yeah it's It's beautiful i have a few my personal thoughts about Mm -hmm. it one is the skill thing that you're talking about just learning this whole thing that i have no idea so i feel like education wise it's really kind Mm -hmm. of fascinating two i think it's season two or three but the male model (laughs) who is how did he not like blow up the internet handsome he's so handsome and and loves his grandmother 
and is really talented. And <laughs> like, I was just he throws like, pots in his grandmother's garden. <laughs> it's so sweet. But he, he's a model. Yeah. And you're like, is this happening? Yeah. How do you exist? You're like straight out of a romance novel. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> and it he's is so sweet. Yeah. It's oh, oh yeah. It's the, the other show. thing I learned. I liked the show, but the end result of everyone's pottery, I learned personally just me because Tristan not, not loved it. Not a pottery it. fan. I think every piece of pottery is ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I although <laughs> what? every time they're like ta da, and I You're was like, like oh. eh. <laughs> although I love the raku stuff with the like the the fire the, the, the yeah trash cans and everything mm-hmm. those those are the best parts i've like started following a bunch of like potters on instagram because <laughs> i'm so fascinated by it i like i now have like three different pottery mugs from artists on instagram because i'm yeah. like i love that i'm gonna buy that totally. it's great we uh we did a family trip in october of last year where we met steven's family halfway in santa fe but it was like october of 2020 when santa fe was pretty shut down and their numbers were rising we shouldn't have done it but we did but uh we there was there's like a pottery place there that you can do little classes like a couple hours classes for 100 bucks or whatever so we went and did it. i've never thrown potter- pottery before we did it it's so hard yeah. you guys it's so hard i did not know how weak i was i was like <laughs> oh i don't have the muscles for this so it makes sense why this judge's arms are the size of my leg because yeah, like massive. you have to be very especially when they're throwing these like huge pots you have to start with like p- pounds and pounds and pounds of clay and somehow get it centered on this thing and like wrangled like a cow like it is it's wild. It's absolutely incredible, but yeah. it's the greatest show. It's really, it is. <laughs> and again, it has, like you said, that soothing, mm-hmm. really low yeah, stakes. Everyone's, everyone's kind. Sweet. Everyone like helps each other. Like, oh, it's great. Yeah, it's really cute. Yeah. yeah. Um, my Bridal Break is also on HBO Max. Great. So um, I had started to see previews of a new show on, I, I want to say it's one of the network shows called Ghosts. And it's, oh, yeah. and um, it's a, the, the woman that was the lead in iZombie, I don't remember her name, but she was in it. And I remember mm-hmm. thinking like, is this cute or is this weird and corny? Mm-hmm. Like, what is this? The previews are kind of weird. Mm-hmm. And randomly, a friend of mine was chatting in a group chat and was like, oh, I saw this, that ghost show, but I heard it was originally a British show. I'm going to give the British one a shot because it's the original. And if I like it, I'll watch the American Mm -hmm. one. After like three or four episodes, she'd hop back on the group chat. She's like, y'all watch the British one. I don't know about the American one yet, but so I started watching the British one. Yeah, I want to watch the American Mm -hmm. one too, but I can say so far I've watched the British Mm -hmm. one on HBO Max and it's really cute. The idea, I don't want to give too much of the plot away, but the idea is all of these ghosts from different eras in life have all passed away in this one piece of this one manner mm-hmm. in like like you know rural england and then this young couple just randomly like through you know the way the family worked out this woman died there were she's like a distant relative and she gets the house mm-hmm. and it unbeknownst to her is now living with all of these ghosts <laughs> and it sounds weird mm-hmm. but it immediately becomes heartwarming there was a scene like i think in episode five i did not expect to i'm like oh, i'm crying <laughs> it's a comedy it's yeah. like 30 minute long really? and oh. i am it really does that that heartwarming that thing you get out of like Shit's creek mm-hmm. where it's like kind of goofy but also heartwarming yeah it's of that vibe right yes mm-hmm. so ghosts i know there's a couple seasons on hbo max yeah. the british one and the american one i Fantastic. think just started and again i'm hearing good reviews yeah so well, my friends like if you don't have hbo it. max yeah. you can watch again i feel stupid i don't remember it's kind of, it's got to be on one of like nbc or cbs i think it's cbs because i think that's why i haven't watched it oh okay i don't want another stupid streaming service oh yeah because see <laughs> we're watching football and i just keep seeing uh, ads for it while uh, watching football so yeah it's, cbs yeah. so we'll i'll link both because i've heard yeah. good things about the american one but i can vouch that the british one is very cute well know what i'm doing for the rest of the day today no it's great <laughs> i will say the pilot is like eh, yeah, yeah. by the end of the second op- episode you're like oh i get what's going on Great. and by third and fourth you are just in with this characters and it's really cute fantastic nice yeah. so mm. ghosts on hbo max yes that's all the bridal it. breaks beth yeah you did it Woo! again <laughs> thanks for coming back <laughs> oh anytime <laughs> you really did it you got married yeah <laughs> yeah i did it i am now a complete woman <laughs> Oh, I guess I haven't had kids yet. So yeah, no, yes, still got that. Finished mm. out the lineage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so um, what do you have to plug, girlfriend? Well, I am. Oh, this does come out this week, huh? Um, so I do uh, pet portrait commissions on the side. And I have put out the list for Christmas gifts. And I think as of recording Sunday afternoon, I have three spots left. So if anyone wants a pet portrait, hurry over to Etsy. Uh, the link for my Christmas listing is tinyurl.com slash sit, stay, holiday. 
I'll put make sure it's yeah, linked in so the it'll be linked up. But so you just do little sketches. I'll mm-hmm. repost the one we have oh, a yeah, little Ruthie. Ruthie. Oh, She's there up she is. on the oh, so nice. I'll have to take a picture of Back that. when she had longer ears. Yeah. We had to trim them because when she really sniffs the ground, bad. the fluffy long ears would just drag in the dirt. <laughs> yeah. And she's ended up with grossly. I mean, they look beautiful, but she's not. She's not dainty enough. Yeah. <laughs> yes. it's such a You're cute pretty. little yeah, sketch. It is it's so good. Yeah. So I, there's full color and black and white options. So I love it. I might have made my limit too much. I have a lot to do now. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. The holiday surge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I kind of, of forgot. It turned into November, and I was like, Oh no, I have to figure that out so <laughs> sounds great it's always fun i mean we'll link also the instagram which is what uh on instagram it's at sit dot stay dot sketch okay we'll link that too because your instagram is adorable yes. oh thank you so, little darn so, so many pumpers <laughs> i just did a guinea uh, two guinea pigs so i don't just do dogs or cats oh there you go yeah. okay you got mm-hmm. a pet yeah send it your way if it's fuzzy i'll draw it so during the pandemic no snakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. seriously i won't do your steak i hate snakes <laughs> hate them <laughs> snakes are not an option Mm-mm. guys during the pandemic you got a dog i sure did how many sketches have you done of your dog uh two i've done two paintings of her well three now because over we were just in texas visiting my uh, in-laws and um i did a little like paint and sip thing for them and oh, like fun. drew their dogs so everyone could paint their own dogs um so now i have a, a very quick painting rendition of jenny that i did and then steven did one of jenny and i think it's hilarious and delightful and beautiful and it's one of my favorite things is he not an artist Aww. um i mean he has skills but not necessarily in that realm okay yeah mm-hmm. he's a great writer mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> no, I, he like paints like D miniatures so like he has oh, okay, like some yeah. but like that's kind of like more like paint by number than like actual so it turned out it looks like a like maybe like a french children's book character like it's so cute, cute. and i'll show you guys Aww. a picture later it's All so right. cute but um yeah so um uh, yeah i've painted her a couple times but just curious just because you know yeah well i imagine you got the dog and immediately was like i gotta sketch the hell out of this thing uh, she's the best <laughs> <laughs> so all right cute. pammy yes we have one last thing to do my favorite it's time <laughs> for the quiz are you ready no doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> pammy we have a website what is it weddingconfessionals.com from there you can um show links to all of our social media where are we on social media you can find us on instagram yep. facebook twitter what's the new one um TikTok. TikTok. Y'all are on TikTok? We have two yes. whole TikToks. Woo. Potentially yeah. more. We'll discuss. Oh, man. I've got ideas. i got <laughs> thoughts. Um, also, from there, you can find our show notes, as we've been mentioning constantly. You can find our show notes there. Also, um, tell us your stories, guys. It's the we best. need the confessionals. We love them. We read them. We obsess about them. Keep them coming. Yes. Um, there's three ways you can send us your, your confessionals. Mm-hmm. One is an email. Email address is what, Pammy? Weddingconfessionals at gmail.com. Have a phone number. Mm-hmm. Would love to know what your interpretation is of <laughs> that number. Mm-hmm. Um, 434? Yes. Um, 533? 633? <laughs> 434 933 I really like what's your interpretation of a phone number, I mean, which she, is a great way to ask for someone's phone number. Hey, what's your interpretation of your phone number? <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to use that in bars, guys. <laughs> the other way you can uh, tell us uh, your confessional is by going to weddingconfessionals.com and mm-hmm. clicking on what tab? The tell us your secret. Tab. Yes. From there, you don't have to give your phone number or your email mm-hmm. address. Just... Pick your own wacky name. We love creativity. And then tell us all your drama. It makes us laugh. Yeah. Um, Also a reminder um, to follow us on Apple Podcasts to subscribe and leave us a rating. Uh, Specifically Apple Podcasts is really persnickety. So help us out so we can help out more brides and grooms. Five stars. Yes, please. Um, Besides Apple Podcasts, Pammy, um, there are two in the A's and two in the C's. We're going to alphabetical now. Okay. So what are the three that are A? Apple Podcast. Give me the other two. Um, Audible. Yep. And Amazon. Great. There are two that with the C. Can you give me one of them? Mm. Five. Four. Oh, that's not helpful. Okay. <laughs> um... Ah, C. Give, 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. Castbox and Castro. Mm, yes. So those are the two. Besides, I can't believe someone named their company Castro. It's a choice. Yep. <laughs> um, Deezer, Downcast, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Overcast, Listen Notes, Player FM, Pocket Cast, Podbean, Pod Paradise, Podtail, Podcast Attic, Podcast Land, Podcast Republic, Radio Public, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube. And also, if you use Alexa or Siri, you can shout our podcast name and it will play. <laughs> Just scream. Yes. Just scream it. Just um, with all question. full-throated. Why are there so many podcast places? There's so many. Why? Yeah. There's a lot. That's insane next time uh have pam name all the peas yeah well i'm trying trying There's to get her to go in an <laughs> alphabetical <laughs> order I mean, if she could just get i have a goal we're gonna slowly we'll get, get it there. back in your brain yes i believe in you castro and Caspot like yes. today are my c's yes the letter for the day let's do it again the c the, the the three a's and the two c's go audible amazon apple Castbox castro she can be hey, taught hey, look hey. at her she's mm-hmm. an intelligent lady wow <laughs> i love it uh, on that note, guys, we done. Woo. That's it. That, thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks for having me back. What a journey. Yay. And Pammy, I'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye. Special thanks to Andy Schreier for our adorable theme song. And David Kantrowitz for our fantastic logo. And Ramsey Millette and Brian Maylard for their technical support. If you want to learn more about our show, where you got to go, Pam? Check out our website, WeddingConfessionals.com. That's it, girl. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.